we're live at the Catholic Leadership Conference. It's in Birmingham, Alabama, and Bookmark is here to interview Donna Marie Cooper O'Boyle. Two of her books, Angels for Kids, and also My Confirmation Book. Great to have you on. Thank you very Again, much. Again, uh, you know, from doing our, our work on EWTN, uh, having yes. to do with uh, the moms. Yes. Absolutely. And that's kind of like your blog and what you've been working on. And how many books, these last two books, they're huh. more for kids and stuff yes. like that. But how many books is it actually? How many books all together? All together, yeah. Well, over, I think it's around 19 now. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And um, well, we're reaching the moms and the right. families. We need to get the, kid, the kids too. So was this your idea? To, you got one, Angels for Kids, and the other, My Confirmation Book. Was this your idea that you thought this naturally fit into what you were doing in the sense of the moms kind yes. of thing? Yes. Or was this something that the, the publishers like Paraclete Press came to you and said, uh, we're looking for material like this? How it's did that work? A, it's a combination mm -hmm. of, you know, I, I talked to them and um, they liked the idea for the confirmation book because mm -hmm. I, I saw a need for a confirmation book. And um, they came up with the idea of the angels, and I've always wanted to write a catechesis on the angels for kids. So mm -hmm. it was kind of wonderful how that worked out. Because you think kids have that kind of wonderment about angels yes. and stuff like uh, that? Well, not necessarily they have the wonderment about the angels, uh -huh. but they, they see all of this, all these other cartoon characters oh, or superheroes uh -huh. and all of the fictional characters. Okay. And I think it's so important to teach them about the angels. Right, right, okay. So you got Angels for Kids here. Now, in, in putting this together, uh, why is it important for kids to know about angels besides something like that? And what is it there to know? I mean, is it do we do they need to understand that when they die, they're not going to become an angel or yeah, things that's, like that? That's or? true. That's one of them. Some even adults think that you know when you go to heaven, you become an, become an angel, an angel right, rather than yourself. So the horn blows at midnight with uh, Jack yeah, Benny years ago. Exactly. So we need to teach the kids. The, the real, you know, they're invisible spirits, so they might not be aware of them. They mm -hmm. might not be learning about them at home or even in their uh, faith formation mm -hmm. that much. And it would be wonderful to supplement that with a real catechesis on the angels. I took it from Pope John Paul II, okay. and scripture, and so to let them know these are real And beings. that's interesting because you, you do make that point, and obviously this is for kids, but it's the odd idea of it's not like St. John Paul II. Right. Uh, thought well, angels. Are, yeah, we kind of really don't talk. They were messengers from the Bible, but it's really it's interesting to see such a great thinker and a great leader. Yes. Even our present Holy Father, the w they talk about angels. There's yes. no question about it. Right. The, the scriptures talked about angels. Right. Right. Exactly. And they, the kids probably hear some of this, you know, from their parents or mm -hmm. or during the faith formation. But we need to uh, supplement it with the teaching. You know, we mm -hmm. need to pull from the teaching, pull from that catechesis on the angels, and put it into a book that would be interesting right. for kids to learn. Right, you said angels are real. We just can't see them, but that doesn't mean they aren't all around us. You said, I've been praying to my guardian angel ever since I was a little girl. You have that the prayer here. Mm -hmm. I've always firmly believed that my guardian angel heard my prayers and helped out. Do you have any situations in your mind when you were, when you were younger, even recently, where you felt like, you know, I know Mother Angelica used to say sometimes yeah. if she was having an issue with somebody, yeah. she'd say, send your guardian angel yes. to their guardian angel, in a sense, to work things out, get, right. the, get the process yes. started, and that right. would help. What about yourself? In your own experience, have you seen any times where you felt like you reached out to your guardian angel and yes. you saw the fruits of that? Oh, yes. Well, every day I reach mm -hmm. out to my guardian angel. And as a little girl, there were there was strife in my life and different challenges mm -hmm. and things, and I... I turned to prayer. I, for some reason, God gave me that grace, and my mm -hmm. mother taught me about prayer, and she's the one who taught me that guardian angel prayer. Mm -hmm. So I did have recourse to my guardian angel. Mm -hmm. And as I grew up, you know, I, I continued to pray. I, there was one time when I was trying to get up this hill in an old jalopy, and it was a snowstorm. And, and I'm not saying these were definitely angels that came, right. but out of the blue, these two men came and pushed my car up the hill, out of the blue on this country road. Right. And, um, and I stopped naively to say, thanks. And I stopped, it got stuck, it again. Got stuck again. And they yelled, don't stop, keep going. going right. And then they were gone. gone right. But I'm not, I'm not saying that, that necessarily were the angels, but God sent help to me. Right, but, exactly. it, but he does right. send angels to earth in the form of uh, men sometimes. Right. Uh, and sometimes we think of them as, you know, winged uh, beings. Right. right, and you talk about the different images from the Old Testament. Yes. Uh, which may be more conceptual because obviously they can travel great distances yes. to show up. And so how would it 
people back then understand. Show their swiftness, the right, sort of exactly. artists depicted them in that right, way. Right, like the Greeks would have Mercury with the winged feet or something yeah. like that, moving around quickly. You also go to point out, and I guess this is important for kids these days, with kind of some of the new age angel yes. things that used to be on, that angels are not like fairies. Right. And like, uh, you know, not, not like Tinkerbell's not exactly. an angel. Right? Exactly. We, yeah. we want them to know that. It's not make-believe, it's not pretend, it's not a, a character, it's not some superhero. Angels are beings, inte intelligent beings created by God to assist us during right. our life. And you mentioned earlier about Pope John Paul II, and you pointed out here in his study called Catechesis on the Angels, which you were referring to earlier, that the existence of angels was denied even in Christ's time by people called the Sadducees. We used yes. to hear about them along with the, uh, who didn't really believe in an afterlife. Right. And the Holy Pontiff went on to explain that the reality of angels has been continually de denied in every age since that time. Well, why do you think there's an effort to deny the mm. angels? Well, you know, good and evil, you know, the devil doesn't want us to believe in the angels. He doesn't want us to know we have recourse mm -hmm. to these heavenly spirits who are so powerful he over, wants us to feel like we're over on our evil. own we're right. on our own you right. know and you can't see them they're not there so we need to teach about right. the angels and our lord jesus also spoke about the angels you say of the innocent and the angels who will separate the good from the bad on the last day yes. jesus disciple asked jesus to explain the power of the weeds of the field and jesus told them that he sows good seeds and the devil sows bad seeds and etc he goes on to talk about how the there'll be the separating later. And also the angels are mentioned, as I mentioned before, in both the Old and the New Testament, right. it comes up. And obviously, angels kind of refers to messenger, right? Really, yes. that concept yes, of a messenger exactly. from God. Right, in, in many ways. Right. Important um, messages, like the Blessed Mother, that she's going to become the right. mother of God, and right. important messages like that, but also messages right. to our, you know, our inspiration to us as well. Our guardian angel brings us messages to do good and to avoid evil. Well, this is something, you know, as a kid, I certainly didn't know that angels are all not the same. And there's yeah. the hierarchy that theologians like St. Thomas Aquinas kind of put together into three groups called hierarchies. Mm -hmm. And now the first group are called the heavenly counselors of God, the seraphim, cherubim, and the thrones, right? Right. And then this is the part that I always, heavenly governors is number two, dominions, virtues, and powers. Yes. And then the messengers of God, principalities, archangels, and angels. The thing that always confused me, I always thought St. Michael, the archangel, was like the most powerful angel. So yeah. why was he on in the third group and not on yeah. the high group? I, because that was his job mm -hmm. in there, you know, because they all have their own tasks. Right. It's, it's, I learned quite a bit, right? <laughs> you know, doing the research for this book. Right, it says that the first, uh, the seraphim, cherubim, and thrones, they are always in God's presence. They don't have contact with people on earth. Right. Uh, and then the uh, second hierarchy, the holy governors, which are the dominions, virtues, and powers, I have no idea about this. Their job is to regulate the force of yes. nature around us in the universe, including on earth, and that's those. And then we've got the, uh, and it's funny, you also think of the word angels and archangels, that's what, but principalities. Yeah. You know, when we hear that sometimes when we talk about principalities of evil. Or I know. And things you, like that. You might think evil, but Yeah, but no, not thinking about it in about a good it sense, in, good in sense. an angelic sense, right? Yes, exactly. And you also say the angels are not silent. Have they been s talking to you in your life? Um, I mean, have you felt like you were prompted at all? I mean, you had that situation you talked about with the car, yeah, but right. was there ever any situations where you were in particularly that you felt like you were prompted to do something or go in a certain direction that you felt like well, you were almost getting uh, well, you, advice? One, that, one never sense. really knows, right. and we don't want to go around telling people that the right. angels the speak to us, to me, you know, right, but we right. just we believe that God gives us our guardian angel to encourage us to do good and to avoid evil and gives us that inspiration to follow God. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if we're open to pray and if we pray, you know, of course, our guardian angel is going to steer us in the right direction. Even if we're not that open, we're, uh, our guardian right. angel is going to be constantly trying to, to turn us toward heaven. And in the scriptures, of course, as we said, obviously, Our Lady with the angel Gabriel, mm -hmm. uh, and then an angel who, who appeared to St. Joseph basically in a dream. Yes. They saw that. And also, one of the ones that was... Uh, one of the ones that I always thought was the most powerful, maybe it was just the way Zeffirelli presented it in yeah. Jesus of Nazareth, right. but it, it's when... Uh, Mary Magdalene uh, goes looking to the tomb, and just before that happened, an angel in the form of a young man told the woman who had gathered at the tomb, do not be alarmed, you're looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He has been raised, he is not here. Mm -hmm. And they kind of use this paraphrase, which was, 
why seek ye the living among the dead? Yes. And it was just this kind of powerful thing. Right. And he was, the, and then he was gone. So. Yeah. Imagine that. Imagine that experience. That's right. Exactly. So. But then we could read about it in scripture, and we can and pray that it will inspire us as well in our lives. Now, what do angels look like? You say. Yeah. For instance, sometimes they appear in human form. We can read that obviously, in the Old Testament. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. Where they came, and of course, there's other depictions like you said, where you might have a. Uh, a winged, mm -hmm. you know, uh, depiction, a more traditional like looking one. to the one. children of Fatima, the right, angel right. appeared. the angel of Portugal. Right. Yes, with wings, it right. appeared to the children and, and um, other places. Right, actually gave them communion at least. Yes, uh, exactly, and bowed down to the ground right, and taught right. them a couple of prayers. Right, right, exactly. And uh, the other thing I thought was interesting in this thing, you talk about Catherine Labore. Yes. Okay, and her thing, you say, St. Catherine Labore described her guardian angel who woke her up one night in 1830 and asked her to come to the chapel to see the Blessed Mother. St. Catherine said at first she thought the visitor was a small child. It was later after the visit with the Blessed Mother she realized without a doubt that the little holy child of dazzling radiance was her guardian angel. Yes. So in that case, it came as a child. Yes. She didn't know until she returned to her room after the visit with the Blessed Mother. And, you know, then it, God spoke to her and said, that was your guardian angel. Right. And you also bring up, you know, not to scare the kids, but, yeah, but, uh, I, but fallen had, angels. And the fact I had to that, tell uh, them about that it. there are. And St. John Paul said, instead of accepting a God full of love, they rejected him, inspired by a false sense of self-sufficiency, of aversion, even hatred, which changed into rebellion. The mm -hmm. angel, this is interesting. The angel's rejection of God was irreversible because God created them to be super intelligent and be able to see the broadest picture of everything throughout history. So in a right. sense, they knew how it was going to end, and they, they still... Knew, they knew exactly. And the reason I made sure I emphasized that is right. that I don't want children to feel that, oh my gosh, I did something bad, I'm going to hell, and there's right, no... Right. you know, I, And I tell them in there that they have recourse to confession, right. you know, okay. to choose the right thing to do. But the angels knew better. They, they were created with such a high intellect. They knew what, if they chose to be mm -hmm. evil... That was their choice. God right. gave them free will too. Right. right. And that's a you say sometimes the way Satan is able, and this I think is very prescient to where we are today, mm -hmm. uh, is able to influence people to do evil things by getting them to believe that he and hell do not exist. Yes. And they have nothing to fear in doing bad things because there will be no eternal punishment. Right. We hear that a lot from the media. Exactly. So if you don't worry about that, why would you care to to try to get to heaven. <laughs> right. if, if, you th if you think anything's okay, you can, uh, right. there's no devil, there's no hell. Now the archangels, we know that there are at least three, right? Right, because Be they're named. Because Michael, Gabriel, and Raphael. And we always think, for those of EW10, we think of uh, wonderful Sister Ma Mary Raphael, who was yeah. mother vicar for years. She was a wonderful, wonderful mm. uh, sister yes. at EWTN. And of course, St. Michael the Archangel, which means who is like God. And again, that's why I was always a little confused saying, how yeah, does that work? He with, was like the how highest. come he wouldn't be like, you know, sitting at the, you know, right up there next to Our Lady or something? Mm -hmm. But anyway. Well, he does. He does. She does give him a lot of work to do. Right, it, apparently I talk so. about that in there. Too. Well, Mother Angelico yeah. certainly th thought he was pretty busy. Yeah. I mean, she talks about founding the radio station up at Short Wave and saying, one of the reasons she built it there was because she saw, saw Michael the Archangel standing there in the field. I believe that, yeah. That's what she saw. You say at the end, of, and this kind of reminds me of EWTN, the image too, mm -hmm. at, at each and every Catholic Mass, each and every day around the world, the priest invites the angels and the archangels to sing to the glory of God. That's true, it's in the Mass. It's amazing. You know that when you're at Mass, angels are there, they're around the altar, it's incredible to think about it, but truly angels are everywhere. And of course, you know, I think of our, our chapel, yes. you know, with the angels sitting there adoring it's the so Blessed nice. Sacrament and being there. It's so nice to see the right. tangible angels, but I wanted to remind the children who don't have right. those angels in their parishes, or maybe who don't go to church, the angels, mm. you know, are there, and it's so amazing. And, and it's important for, I guess, we want them to understand there are friends. Yes. And there's someone that, in a sense, you can rely on or go right. to. Right, and pray to at pray any to. time. Right. And it, in formal words, like I put in the back of the book in right. those prayers, or just from, I always say, just pray from your heart right. and right. just ask your angel to help you. Yeah, and a lot of times, in my mind, I always think of them in terms of guidance, in the yes. sense of saying, absolutely. You know, I w you know, sometimes there are things that happen and you feel uneasy yes. about it, and, and you, you know, is that your angel saying to you? Eh, I don't think so. Yeah. You know, maybe this isn't the right thing. Yeah. We should be going ahead. Exactly. Going ahead. It's, 
This I didn't know either. It says each guardian angel takes on three additional spiritual roles as well. Mm -hmm. They help us on our way toward peace, penitence, and prayer. Yes, I learned that too, doing I, research for this book. Yeah, I never heard that before mm -hmm. particularly. Well, I, I trust uh, St. Pope John Le Paul II in his catechesis on the angels. <laughs> well, he, he gave an amazing teaching on the angels. Yeah, well, he's, we certainly know where he is today. That's right. Have you had any reaction to this book and yes, so far? Yes, I mean, um, uh, parents are enjoying, enjoying it as it, well. Right. They say the same th as you. I'm learning, so they learned a lot about the angels while they're reading it to right. their children. Right. And the children have told me th that they never realized they had such a, a powerful companion, yeah, right, actually ally, part right, of their yeah. family. Right. Saint Padre Pio said to think of them as a family member. Yeah. Right, and especially if you can get them when they're young with a proper understanding, yes. it's something that they got a better chance of carrying that's forward. That's right? why I want them right. to get it when they're young. That's Angels for Kids. And now as you get a little older, at least in the Latin Rite, we have yes. something called Confirmation. Yes. And this is the My Confirmation book. And this is one of the sacraments, I think, Everybody pretty much gets baptism. Yes. Everybody gets the idea that you're supposed to learn how to go to confession, or, right? You know, uh, and then preferably before you go to communion, and then go to communion, of course. You know, the Blessed Sacrament, Holy Eucharist. Confirmation always kind of gets lost there, as though. Yeah. You know what? You know what exactly is that? Is it? Mm -hmm. uh, is it uh, an initiation? It is, and mm -hmm. in some rites they actually do it when you're born. Right. Uh, not when you're born, but when you're baptized right. all at the same time. In ours, it used to be, you know, I, for me, it was fifth grade. Right. But now it's, and I even know, isn't it? It can be it could fifth be, grade it to could be, 12th grade. It or, could be fourth grade, right. fifth grade, up to like eighth, ninth, tenth. Right, yeah, right. Some okay. parishes stretch it out because they're trying to keep the kids longer and, right, before right. they get that sacrament. But when I wrote yeah, this. Because some kids don't treat it as initiation. They treat it like it's an exit door. I know. That, that once they get this, yes, it's kind of like. that's it. They're I, done. I, and got, I, I got my paper stamped. Yeah. Now I can leave. We have to keep reminding them that's not the end. Right. This that's is the supposed beginning. To be. <laughs> well, one of the things, too, in the old days, and I don't know if they do it anymore. I know if they weren't doing it as much, maybe. Whereas you used to do, the bishop would tap you on the face. Yeah, they would actually. Yeah. <laughs> and it was this concept, at least back then, it was pr prior to the. Vietnam War. Uh -huh. I got say. the hit on the face. But it was the, that you were, in a sense, were the soldiers in Christ's yes. army. Soldiers you were the church militant. You yeah. were here, and you were going to have to, and the idea that you were going to have to stand up for the faith yes. and defend the faith. That's right. And that you were being confirmed right. in this way with the Holy Spirit uh, because you were going to be expected to be able to do those mm -hmm. things. Right. Now, it says, hey, I'm a member of the church. It's exciting to know the same Holy Spirit who appeared to the Apostles and the Blessed Mother at Pentecost was on the third person of the Holy Trinity is the one who will come to you when you're confirmed. The Sacrament of Confirmation is one of the three sacraments that initiate you into the Church, Baptism, Eucharist, etc. So Confirmation strengthens you and brings you an increased deepening of baptismal grace. Right. Now you also set this up as you go through the here in the chapters with uh, reflections. Yes. Uh, you know, do you think kids do reflections? Do you think this is something well, what a parent would do with the child? Well, a parent or? can do it with the child. Uh -huh. And I set it up, the publisher actually asked me if I could write it in a way that the younger confirmands could, could mm -hmm. get this. And so it's written, in, but also hopefully so the older ones can as well. Right, right. So it, it hopefully serves. Well, I was going to try to say, well, what age bracket did you well, gear the book to? Well, it was supposed to be seven, right. eight, seven and up. And the publisher even said they think even five, year, some five-year-olds could understand. In this book. Yeah, with the parents. And each chapter talking about the gifts of the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit is written in a way, illustrating it with a story. Right. But having reflection and a little prayer at the end of right. each chapter. Like, can you take some time to think about how Jesus is calling you to be the light of the world? What can you do today to be a light to others and to pray? Here I am, Simple Lord. Simple things. Come, I come to do your will. Help me to be one with you, please shine through me so others will come to know you. And then you go through, and this this is like flashing back to fifth grade. Now. Yeah, yeah. And I remember the the ditto sheet we had, <laughs> wisdom, fortitude, Dude, counsel, so and you had to memorize. Yeah. And then <laughs> father, and, and then the father world. would come in, and then he, you know, <laughs> oh, and, you'd have to be, and you'd, and you'd be to, afraid you'd right, forget. Right, and you're sitting there, and then he'd call <laughs> you out and he'd ask you the questions. And then you forget, all. even though you know them, because you're afraid. <laughs> <laughs> Wisdom. Wisdom is considered to be the greatest gift of all. Why is wi why do you think? I don't know, but created? that's what I learned. That's it's, what it's they the, say. That's right? what they say. Well, it's there's the, a book it's in the, the scriptures, it's right? The so top, I guess it it's is. the top gift. And you have little stories here, and then you ask 
the kids about the stories. Yes. And um, and where did the stories come from? Did you create them? I just them? made them up. Made I just them up created to them. illustrate a point. I to created the, the story point. to illustrate the point. A right. couple of them ha are real life, uh, you know, experiences that, that I know you've had from yourself, other people. Right. You know, kids I right. know or okay. something like that. And I, mostly just to uh, try to get the kids thinking of how to use that gift in their mm -hmm. life, in ordinary life. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, talking about sharing the faith when some child comes over your house and you have a slumber party or you have, you know, you're having a birthday party and then the child goes and prays with the parents mm -hmm. for a moment. And why did that happen? Because that was their tradition in right. their family and it was how they can help to show the, show faith, the faith to someone, to someone else. else. Like they were wondering, well, what are you doing there? Because well, they have no faith. Right, or the ability to say when somebody maybe is getting involved with something that they shouldn't be to exactly. say, to step up that's and say, one of the you chapters. know, you really. Yep, that's exactly what right. I said in one of the chapters right, exactly. there. Mm -hmm. So you got counsel, Holy Spirit, of course, we know is the wonderful counselor. Mm -hmm. And so we don't, and fortitude, that's what I always remember. Fortitude yeah. gives strength to the soul. And yeah. it seems today, I think most of the time, it seems like, a lot of us could use some more fortitude. And yes. It seems like mm -hmm. we too easily kind of give up. Yeah. If things get a little tough, we kind of say, oh, well, yeah, that didn't work out so well. Or with the kids or other people, mm -hmm. well, they're going to do it anyway. That's so terrible to just. I keep telling them that, but they're going to mm -hmm. do it anyway, oh. so why bother? That's laziness, really. Right. If you just, it's just giving up, and, and we're responsible right. to raise those little saints to heaven. If we're going to be wishy washy, what are they going to get from that? Right, it gives strength to the soul. And I guess it's like a lot of things. The more you exercise it, the stronger yes. you get. The less you use it, the weaker it is, exactly. the harder it is to That's to what I'm bring trying to teach the kids to exercise and practice right. those virtues so they'll be living in their heart. Right. And the reflection is, how can you defend your faith today in a charitable way? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's important that they understand like it's you, not a fight. You can't be yeah, fighting and arguing. And, and I talk to them about their example, mm -hmm. how their example is powerful. And another thing I, I impress upon them is that they can pray, I don't know if you caught that or not, any place, mm -hmm. any time, no matter where there's a rule, at school or anything. Because a lot of kids are afraid, they'll say to me at faith formation mm -hmm. class, well, we're not allowed to pray. And at I a public school. And I say, well, you know what, you could pray any place. You right. just don't have to do the exterior. Right, don't do something that keys you can somebody, just, that's yeah. what you're doing. And just lift your heart to God right. and pray at any time, pray to the Holy yeah, Spirit. That's good so that way they know they can go through life and they can pray whenever they want. Nobody could stop them from praying. Hey, listen, I can tell you, there's plenty of prayer going on. Every time an exam gets put on somebody's desk yes. in public schools, there's a lot of praying yeah, going on. That's I, right. I have no doubt about that, that's just right. like there's no atheists in foxholes. That's right. Uh, <laughs> the other one here you have here near the end, eight, is fear of the Lord. And this is one mm -hmm. you always, people go, what does that mean? Yeah, why are, especially, why are you trying to scare the kids? Yeah. Here you are trying to have this nice book and reach right, these young right. people. And you're trying to scare them that they're supposed to be afraid of God when God loves them. Right. Well, it's one of one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And it's not a fear of the Lord that you're going to tremble in your boots like, mm -hmm. oh, my gosh. I, you know, it's that you have that healthy fear of what are the consequences mm -hmm. of not living your life the way you should as a Christian? Mm -hmm. what, and, and we need to have that fear of the Lord. We need to have that awareness of the fact that mm -hmm. we are a Christian and we do have to follow some rules, right, to right. be able to get to follow that straight and narrow right. path that leads to heaven. So, you know, the fear of the Lord is a good thing. Right, I know it just gets misunderstood yeah, the way so that's sometimes why I try to explain terminology it to can be yeah. People think, oh, it's really Yeah, you don't have you a believe, loving God. You've got that Old Testament image there you got to yeah. get rid of here. We're Easter people here. Gotta yeah, get, exactly. Got to get with it, Donna Marie. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so let me ask you, how long did it take you to put these books together? Did you do them around the same time? or? Oh, yeah, I did them sort of around the same time. I did the Confirmation one first and the Saints one. Okay. You know, uh, I, the one fairly the fairly angels, quickly. Right? Yeah. Right. Yes, yes, yes. Right. Uh, yes. Uh, not, well, well, you've written a lot long. of books. Yes. So you're going to write some more books? Oh, yes. I have some more coming out as we speak. Do you get ideas from doing your blogs and having people send you emails back and forth? I mean, how do you, uh, where do your ideas come well, from? Well, yeah. You know, I talk to so classes? many people. You know, I, I come speak to a conference all of like the Catholic Leadership I, Conference, but right? But I really feel it's God inspires my heart. Mm -hmm. And I see a need, too, because uh, a lot of my work is toward the family, right, mothers right. and families and children. So I see the need. Right. for something to, to teach them and to help them and to encourage them with. Right. So that's pretty much. Um, well, we all need encouragement. The family certainly does. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much you. for your encouraging you. work. Thank you, Doug. Thanks for coming to the Catholic Leadership Conference. Thank we need all. good Catholic leaders. Thank you for Speaking having me. Speaking here with uh, Donna Marie Cooper O'Boyle, author of two books, Angels for Kids and also my confirmation book, both of them. <laughs>